Testament or the New, because in the Old Testament it's Hebrew, so of course you read it from the right to the left, and the New Testament's in Greek, so you read That probably wasn't what you meant. <laughs> what, what, what did you mean? How do, how, do, how do we read the Bible? Any thoughts? Any recommendations? Um, a thousand things. Frequently and thoroughly is the, is the best answer. Um, the Bible was not primarily written in order to be read in ten verse chunks. Um, we have cut the Bible down to size. Now, obviously, there are some bits, like the Psalms, and like some passages, like the book of James, is, is written in very short bursts. But most of it, including Paul's letters, and certainly the Gospels, and certainly great books like Isaiah and so on, are, are read in order to be experienced the way you experience a symphony. Um, imagine if you went to a concert and you got the first ten bars of Beethoven 5 and then the conductor turned around and said, okay, that, that's all for this week, come back same time next week and we'll have the next ten bars. You think, well, hey, this is, this is... And if somebody said, oh, but if you listen to the whole thing, you'd never remember it all, you think, well, that's not the point. You don't listen to it in order to remember. You will remember quite a lot of it. You listen to it in order to be... Um, swept along in the full flow and sweep and flood of it. And, and I grieve over the fact that there are many, many Christians who have never, ever read one of the Gospels or even one of the Epistles straight through at a sitting. John's Gospel, even slowly, will take you two hours. Um, now, if you're really engrossed in a novel, you'd read that for that long quite easily. Why not just allow the thing to wash over you? Of course, then, there's all the time in the world to go back and say, I really now want to do a study on John chapter 13 or whatever it is and go down into the details of the words. But see the parts in the light of the whole. And that means the whole Bible. Um, and, and one could talk all evening about you know, all the different things that happen when you see, say, the whole of Genesis and Exodus as one single narrative and how that actually works from the beginning to the end. The whole of the Pentateuch, the whole, as I said before, the book of Isaiah, or the way that the Psalms fit together into their whole book, and so on and so on. And my uh, favorite, really, where I started was, was Romans. That most people read Romans in little bits, and even those who think they know Romans reasonably well, they tend to know bits of Romans 1, 2, and 3, then little bits of 5, 6, 7, and 8, and then they worry about 9 to 11, and there's some interesting stuff at the back. But instead, see Romans as a symphony in four movements. And think how the themes work. Until we wrestle with Scripture like that, we're really not honoring it. You know, if this is the book God meant us to have by the Spirit, then it's important that we actually uh, take that seriously instead of just snipping it down to make it um, digestible, like somebody with a huge banquet in front of them who insists on going to the back room and just making a peanut butter sandwich instead. Isn't it hard to sell it and market it in bigger chunks, though? I don't know whether it's harder to sell it or market it. I, I sometimes think people are excited by the challenge, actually, especially young people. You know, if, 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 if you say to a young person, oh, maybe you'd like to read a few verses of the Bible now and again, it's like sort of ho-hum, oh, well, maybe I might. But if you say, hey, there's this world out there, come on, dive in, get into it, um, swim around, um, then maybe they'll take it seriously. Of course, they may need some help um, because some of it, they won't understand, and they need to know that that's okay. You know, the first time I read one of the longer books of the Bible through, I was 13 or 14 years old, and I sat down one day and read through the book of Revelation. I didn't have a clue what most of it was about, but I had this sense of this powerful, extraordinary thing, this sweep of images, and I, I remember that day, even though it was um, you know, nearly 50 years ago, a very vivid experience. Um, the church from quite early on chopped it up in order to read the Bible in the liturgy, and that's absolutely fair enough. Um, you can't, uh, most of us can't actually, when we're doing liturgy, we're doing worship in church, we can't actually have a service that goes on for five or six hours. We might like to, the Eastern Orthodox often do that, and some of the African churches, once you've got yourself to church on a Sunday, you want to be there for at least three hours, because you've probably come a long way, and it's exciting. Um, but, but actually,
actually, in some of the early manuscripts, there are little marks indicating that from quite early on, the church did divide scripture up into lectionary portions for reading in public worship. But the, the thing then we have to remember is this. If I have a, a room in my house which has a small window, if I stand back from it, I may only see a little bit of the countryside outside. If I press my nose up against that small window, I can see this whole sweep of countryside around. Now, when we read 10 verses of John or Romans or Isaiah or whatever it is, the temptation is only to think of those 10 verses. But actually, we ought to see this as a little window through which we see the whole thing. So in my tradition, in the Anglican Church, we say morning and evening prayer each day. There's an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading each time. And I've often said to people, what is basically going on in each service is we're actually reading the whole Old Testament, but we're just reading it through the lens of these 15 and 20 verses. And we're reading the whole New Testament. We're thinking the whole New Testament, but we're just reading this particular bit because the service is an act of praise to God. And when you read scripture in public, it's not just informing the congregation what's going on, it's declaring the mighty acts of God, which is an act of praise and adoration and thanking God for what he's done. So we read, I say a little bit of Romans, a little bit of John, whatever it is, but we're actually thinking of that whole sweep of the new covenant. Uh, and I find that helps me to reflect on what's actually going on when we're worshiping. So it is dangerous simply to feed people with these tiny little snippets. But um, if you're going to do it that way for liturgical sake or for your own private reading, if that's what you've got the time for, remember that actually you're reading the whole thing day by day, but you're just focusing on this a little bit. I am not the best, do not be impressed Compared to God's holiness, I smell like death <laughs> Not talking breath, but what was inside my chest It was dirty and worthy, and I was a mess But surely he worked me and made me fresh But I don't get the credit, it's God's righteousness I'm a fool for Christ, and I'm moving like when I die